Buenos dias. Hope you all got some sleep. It was very good being with the Yads last night till 1 a.m. And so we begin. Are you all ready? The assembly will come to order. And we will begin our day today with prayer led by ecumenical guest Mabel Gone, vice moderator of the Waldensian Evangelical Church of Rio de la Plata, Uruguay. Do you not know? Have, I <clears throat> have you not heard? The Lord is a, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let us find hope in the promises contained in our baptisms, for God is making us new. I invite you to turn to each other in small groups for a few minutes of prayer. Let us come together in prayer. Thank God for your grace that set, set us free in Christ for personal and public responsibility. Your gift of love let us go sharing justice, solidarity, healing, living in peace 
and harmony with the created nature. O oh Lord, guide us. Give us the light of wisdom for the challenges our society presents us. We know, O oh Lord, that your spirit cannot be locked up in our churches, in our buildings, because it blows everywhere in unknown ways. Give us strength and consciousness to all of us in days of decisions, in difficult situations. Open our eyes. Give songs in our hearts so we can imagine a better world, a new possible world. Que el Señor nos fortalezca para actuar y nos dé la esperanza de creer que otro mundo es posible. La humanidad toda necesita de tu amor que genera esperanza y alegría de vivir. En el nombre de tu Hijo Jesús. Amén. Amén. The message of the gospel to make disciples of all nations hasn't changed. But the ways that we start new churches and new worshiping communities has changed dramatically in the last 20 years. In years past, we used to gather 15 or so Presbyterians together, go out and buy a piece of property, put up a building on it, and see how things went over time. But today, people are trying to find, where is God at work? Where am I convicted to do ministry? And we begin it there. So we see new churches starting up in places like coffee shops and tattoo parlors, storefronts, by renting spaces in Goodwills or a local school. That's why we began to wonder at the foundation, could some of the funds that have been set aside in decades past that were used primarily for brick and mortar projects be used for some of these new church plants? The Presbyterian Foundation has been raising, safeguarding, and distributing funds for mission for over 200 years. And faithful Presbyterians have been giving gifts to ensure that we continue to grow, but in ways that are relevant. Our staff spent a year reviewing literally hundreds of funds and found that many of them could in fact be repurposed for the needs of the church today while still being faithful to the donor's intent. We worked in partnership with the General Assembly Mission Council and the Presbyterian Investment and Loan Program to make available nearly $2 million a year to help seed these new worshiping communities. At the Presbyterian Foundation, we're committed to making every dollar count that we've been entrusted with for Christ's mission. And who knows, maybe God's already at work where you live to start the next worshiping community. Praise God. The moderator recognizes Commissioner Eustacia Marshall, moderator of the Committee on Bills and Overtures. I am Eustacia Marshall, Teaching Elder Commissioner from the Presbytery of Charlotte. The Bills and Overtures Committee wishes the Assembly to be aware of how much business still lies before us. This assembly has 19 committees that need to report. As we start our work together this morning, we have almost completed the work of nine committees. That means we have 10 more committees yet to complete their reports. We are going to have to work together, friends. We will have to work together well to make that happen. Mr. Moderator, it is our hope to start the afternoon plenary with civil union and marriage and arrest any reports that have not been completed by this morning session. Thank you very much. I understand the desire to hear and say everything possible about an issue before us, but if we do that with even a fraction of the items before us, we will be here until the very early hours of tomorrow morning. 
If a speaker has said something close to what you wanted to say, probably not as eloquently as you would say it, but close, maybe you could save your words for another time. Mr. Moderator, in order to expedite our work, I move that the time limit for each speaker be reduced from two minutes to one. Okay. And friends, this comes from the committee. Is there discussion? Number seven. My name motion is Bob number Mitchell. seven. My name is Bob Mitchell. I am a teaching elder from the beautiful and bankrupt city of Stockton. Uh, I yeah. am from the Presbytery of Stockton, and I uh, I gladly concur with the Bills and Overture's desire that uh, we begin uh, the consideration of Committee 13 at 1.50. I'm moving that that would become the order of the day. All right, there is a, a motion still on the floor. So you could propound that after we dispense with this motion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay. The motion before the body is whether to uh, limit speeches for all remaining items, is that correct? Yes. Um, to one minute each. Are there questions or discussions? I'm seeing some blue cards. Without objection? Is there objection heard? There is objection heard, okay. Are there questions or comments then? Oh, sorry, microphone one. Nancy Summerlin, Teaching Elder, Presbytery of the James. I understand I don't want to stay here longer than I have to, but I think with the, probably the most important matter before us, it is important that all voices be heard on this matter. I am willing to stay as long as it takes. I think we've learned um, We've learned so far that when, that when strongly held beliefs are not heard, they find an outlet in ways that are not helpful. We are called to speak the truth in love and to listen to each other in love. And I would ask that we not limit our speaking uh, to one minute so we may hear and speak. Thank you. Let me call the commissioner first at microphone seven to speak in favor so that we be fair. Bill Dabney, Twin Cities area teaching elder. As someone who stood here for an hour and a half last night and didn't get to speak, I think one minute does allow us to make a concise statement of a view and therefore we will have more opportunity for more people to speak. And I would support the change in time permitted to speakers. Thank you. It is right? By the way, this motion to modify debate is not debatable. <laughs> I uh, should have seen that because of our handy dandy uh, Thing here, so all debate will cease, and we're going to vote. Tur However, there is a motion at number four. Mr. Moderator, Melinda Thompson, oh, um, ruling elder from National Capital Presbytery. I'd like to amend the motion to make the time one and a half minutes. May I speak to the motion? If it's seconded. All right, it's moved and seconded. Okay. And it is amendable, by the way. Okay. So, okay. Commissioner. Um, I recognize that there are many people and many items that have not had any opportunity. And many people have had time to speak for two minutes. So I'm trying to be accommodating to allowing people who haven't had even the opportunity for their issue to come up to have a little more and more time and still try to limit our time on each issue. Thank you. Question at microphone seven. 
Um, <laughs> that's tall. Joanne Lee, teaching elder from Presbytery of the Twin Cities area. I'm wondering, regardless if it's one minute or two minute, from the time to time, the moderator can ask if uh, those who are saying new arguments may continue to stand up here, but if you've already heard what you'd like to say, perhaps you could go sit down. I am trusting that folks will use their own judgment and discretion, but if from time to time you need a little prodding or prompting from me, I will be happy to oblige that one. The amendment is still on the floor to modify to one and a half minutes. Is there anyone to speak in opposition? Microphone number one. It's not debatable. Don't keep it. Oh, is it okay? <laughs> um, Mr. Moderator, um, I believe that all of our committees have done wonderful work. Some of them have had grueling testimony and have heard most of this. And I would like to suggest uh, 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 that we trust the committees to have heard all this and more. So I um, oppose the motion for anything over a minute. Thank you. Okay. All right. Again, the question is on the amendment to make it to one and a half minutes. Sir, is at microphone seven? No. That's a separate one. Okay. Any other speakers? Microphone three. On the amendment? Yes, okay. Mr. Moderator. I'm speaking in favor of the amendment. I'm Becky Schwant from John Calvin. Uh, some of us, as we were told in many of our webinars to prepare to Make sure we limit our presence at the mic so that when you do have a really important topic to speak about, uh, you will still be heard. And I get the feeling a lot of people have not spoken much and carefully crafted things at the exact time limit so that they could speak to the things that were very important to them. Okay. Let me suggest that we um, call the question on this. Uh, is there objection to calling the question on the amendment? There's no objection? No as in no, you don't want to call the question? Call the question, all right. If there's no objection, we'll call the question on the amendment, which is the one and a half minutes. All right, the advisory delegates, please vote when your keypad is active. on the amendment. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their vote? We await the results. Theological Student Advisory Delegates, 37% yes, 63% no, 0% abstain. Young Adult Advisory Delegates, 48% yes, 51% no, 1% abstain. Ecumenical Advisory Delegates, 33% yes, 67% no, 0% abstain. Missionary Advisory Delegates, 57% yes, 43% no, 0% abstain. Commissioners, you've been advised. Again, the question is, will the assembly modify the main motion, changing it from two minutes to one and a half minutes? Please vote when your keypad is active. The main motion, one minute. Excuse me. The amendment's on the floor. Yeah. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their votes? We await results. Two amendments of the majority.
On this vote, the yeas are 29 percent, the nays are 71 percent, abstentions are 0 percent. Majority for the amendment having not um, been achieved, the motion is defeated. We're back to the main motion, which is the original recommendation from the Bills and Overtures Committee for one minute. Are there further discussions? Oh, that's right. Yes, you're right. Sorry about that. All right. The question before the body again is the uh, committee's recommendation to uh, limit speeches to one minute. Advisory delegates, please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their votes? We await results. Theological student, advisor delegate, 79% yes, 21% no, 0% abstain. Young adult advisory delegates, 89% yes, 11% no, 1% abstain. Ecumenical advisory delegates, 67% yes, 17% no, 17% abstain. Missionary advisory delegates, 100% yes. Commissioners, you've been advised. Again, the question is, will the assembly limit, limit debate to one minute per speech? Please vote when your keypad is active. This requires a two-thirds, friends. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their votes? We await results. On this vote, the yeas are 94 percent, the nays are 6 percent, zero abstentions, two-thirds having been achieved. The motion is agreed to. All speeches, therefore, are in debate, are limited to one minute per speaker. Commissioner at microphone seven to propound a motion. Thank you again, Mr. Moderator. I am Bob Mitchell from the Stockton Presbytery. I would amend um, our consideration to make uh, the Report from the Committee 13 Civil Union and Marriage Issues become the order of the day at 150. At 150, 150? 150, yes, sir. All right. Is there a second? Second. Question at microphone four. I've had uh, Candace Worth from New Hope Presbytery, teaching elder. Uh, I've had a little parliamentary explanation but I'm still a little confused if we have an order of the day. My understanding is that that's always worship. And so I didn't know if it was like the order of the afternoon, but that our focus, my understanding was that our focus was worship. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Moderator, of course, worship is always an order of the day, but in Robert's Rules of Order, you can set any item of business or, or a special speaker as an order of the day. And I believe it's the intention of the commissioner to make the report of that committee an order of the day so that everyone can know for sure what time we were bringing up that matter. Is the commissioner at microphone seven propounding an auxiliary motion to the motion that was propounded by the previous speaker? No. Okay. If not, um, Mr. Mitchell, did you want to speak on your motion? It's been moved and seconded, and it's properly before the body. Thank you again very much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I, I think that we are considering several very important issues at the General Assembly. Uh, there are two or three that uh, receive a great deal of uh, 
high profile in terms of media and interest in the church. And I think those are the kind of uh, issues that we should consider uh, when we're fresh instead of at the end of the day uh, with issues having pushed it until we're just dog tired. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there someone who'd like to speak in opposition to that motion to modify the docket and make Committee 13's report the order of the day at 1.50 p.m.? If not, without objection, I'll call the question on this question. Why don't we go to by voice vote? Advisory delegates, all those in favor of making the order of the day at 1.50 p.m. Uh, Committee 13's report say yes. All those opposed say no. Any abstentions? Commissioners, you've been advised. All those in favor say yes. yes. All those opposed say no. Any abstentions? The motion is agreed to. Motion is approved. The order of the day at 1.50 p.m. will be Committee 13. Motion at microphone 7. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Justin Marple, teaching elder from Western New York. I move that we allow extra time for those who do not speak English as their first language. Okay. Is there a second? Would you suggest, uh, Mr. Marple, a specific time or just? I think that would be at your discretion, Mr. Moderator. Okay. Is there objection in approving that amendment? Hearing and that main motion it's been moved and seconded to allow for those whose, for English as a second language, a little bit more leeway beyond the one minute at the moderator's discretion if it gets too long. Is there objection? Hearing no objection, it's so ordered. Ms. Marshall, anything further? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that we begin by completing the report of the Committee on Middle East Peacemaking Issues, Committee 15, then move to the Committee on Mission Coordination, Committee 10, and pick up with the business scheduled for today. Mr. Moderator, yesterday on a motion from Commissioner Susan Spencer from the Presbytery of Plains and Peaks, the assembly allowed us time to develop a motion to combine groups created to do some continuing work on items in the assembly's actions on item 05-12 from the assembly committee on mid-council issues. I met with Ms. Spencer, John Wilkinson, chair of the committee on the office of the general assembly, COGA, and Jill Hudson, who staffed the mid-council commission. Would you please recognize Ms. Spencer, who is here to present a motion resulting from that conversation? Moderator recognizes Ms. Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I am Susan Spencer, teaching elder commissioner from Presbytery of Plains and Peaks. Action taken yesterday during the Assembly's consideration of item 512 called for several groups to continue pieces of the work coming out of mid-council issues. My motion is intended to reduce the number of groups that need to be formed to do this work. I move that an administrative commission be appointed by the moderator of the 220th General Assembly in consultation with the stated clerk with the authority described in the Assembly's action on Recommendation 5 of 05-12, and that the Commission be composed of 14 members, four commissioners from the 220th General Assembly, four members from the Mid-Council Commission created by the 219th General Assembly, four members from the Committee on the Office of the General Assembly, one member from the National Racial Ethnic Ministries Task Force and one representing Synod Executive Leadership. In addition to the authorities granted as a commission, this group is to have responsibilities as a task force to fulfill the tasks defined by the actions on 05-12 numbers 1 through 4 and 7. The membership for action 05-12 number 8 will remain as described in that motion. Okay. 
Is there a second to that motion? All right. Would you like to speak any further on that motion? You're okay? Okay. Question at one. Chair recognizes microphone one for a question. Mr. Moderator, I'm Marjorie Rossi from the Presbytery of Hudson River, and I would like to ask if it would be possible to uh, include business later that addresses other task forces to be created in this question and to hold this discussion until all of those other task forces have been brought before the body. Okay. There's a suggestion uh, from the commissioner to hold this off, to hold off any further uh, recommendations regarding creation of, of task forces. What's your sense? Can I uh, see show of cards? Okay, I'm sensing that folks would like to consider this item now. Microphone A to speak in opposition. My name is Robert Ostell, teaching commissioner from Charlotte Presbytery. Uh, I would speak against this motion because, as I understand it, the, th the three groups proposed yesterday, one is to be a think group, one is to be a do group, and one is concerned primarily with representation. Uh, and I think to merge them all would actually result in worse stewardship because we would be moving a large group around in travel to accomplish three very discrete tasks rather than uh, three uh, smaller groups to do uh, very specific tasks. So I speak against this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Was there a motion at microphone seven or no? Okay. Any further speakers on this uh, motion? All right. Why don't we go to the uh, keypads? Please, please make sure it's on. Advisory delegates, please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their vote? We await the results. Theological Student Advisory Delegates, 57% yes. 24% no, 19% abstain. Young adult advisory delegates, 46% yes, 44% no, 10% abstain. Ecumenical advisory delegates, 57% yes, 29% no, 14% abstain. Missionary advisory delegates, 25% yes, 63% no, 13% abstain. Commissioners, you've been advised. Again, the question is, will the assembly approve the motion that is on the screen? Please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their vote? We await the results. On this vote, the yeas are 64%, the nays are 34%, abstentions are 2%, the motion is agreed to, and the item is passed. Mr. Moderator, that completes this report of the Committee on Bills and Overtures. Thank you, Ms. Marshall. The moderator recognizes Commissioner Lynn Bova, moderator of the Committee on General Assembly Procedures. Thank you, Mr. Moderator.
My name is Lynn Bova. I'm a ruling elder commissioner from Maumee Valley Presbytery and the moderator of the Committee on General Assembly Procedures. I'm here again bringing you your third daily update on per capita financial implications. On the screen and on financial implications report, as of July 5th made available to us on PCBiz, we will now see the total financial implications approved by General Assembly so far and also those pending before you. The total approved so far impacting the per capita budget are as follows. For 2012, a total of zero dollars. For 2013, a total of $148,385, representing eight cents per capita. And for 2014, a total of $96,390, representing five cents per capita. The total of pending items with financial implications yet to be approved are as follows. For 2012, a total of $600. For 2013, a total of $194,243, representing 10 cents per capita. And for 2014, a total of $137,647, representing 7 cents per capita. The Committee on General Assembly Procedures will meet again this evening to consider, consider the final budget adjustments, and we will have the privilege of reporting to the Assembly tomorrow morning the Committee's recommendation on balanced per capita budgets for 2013 and 2014. Commissioner members of the Assembly Committee on General Assembly Procedures, please remember that we will meet as soon as the plenary concludes this evening, there is a room change. We will be meeting in room 325 to finalize the per capita budget. Fellow commissioners, may the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ continue to guide us as we decide the business before us today. Mr. Moderator, this concludes the third financial implications update from the Assembly Committee on General Assembly Procedures. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bova. There is a question at microphone five. Mr. Moderator, uh, John Hicks, ruling elder from Boise Presbytery. I have a question for the chair. Uh, we have uh, year to date dismissed uh, a fair number of churches to other denominations. And uh, my sense is that the impact will not be too, of, too bad in 2013, but by the time we get to 2014, and also anticipating uh, additional churches leaving. I'm curious what membership base the committee is using to estimate the increase in per capita. We received information from, um, from COGA and from um, the Office on General Assembly and I don't know the exact numbers. I can probably get those for you. Um, could I ask? Mr. Clerk. Would you, moderator? Uh, Mr. Moderator, Madam Moderator, we do have a, a we do calculate for a declining membership as we figure in the rate going forward. Whether the number is accurate or not, you know, time will tell, but we don't just use the fixed number. We try to use I don't have those numbers in front of me. We can get those to you later if you wish. Uh, Mr. Clerk, I think that would at some point be uh, good information for the assembly. Okay. I've been alerted to the fact that um, the vice moderator for the Committee on Mission Coordination may have some information. Ms. Marcy Glass. Marcy Glass, teaching elder from Boise Presbytery, and um, during the mission coordination report, um, Joey uh, Bailey is prepared to present that information to answer that question. Okay. Question at microphone one. Yes, uh, my name is Jim Hedgetus, teaching elder commissioner from Lake Michigan Presbytery. In an effort to uh, expedite matters today, I'm wondering if it's possible uh, to limit questions to 20 seconds. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. 
Anything further? Ms. Bova, thank, thank you. At this point, the moderator recognizes Commissioner Marcy Glass, Vice Moderator of the Committee on Mission Coordination. Welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good morning, everyone. My name, again, is Marcy Glass, Teaching Elder from Boise Presbytery, Vice Moderator of Mission Coordination Committee, bringing you our third and long-awaited update on financial implications. As of your prudent and careful review of the items presented to you yesterday, the following is the impact to the mission budget of the items you have approved. For 2013, $18,420. For 2014, $13,740. The total cost of actions still pending is as follows. For 2013, $931,259. For 2014, $841,571. The detail of the items approved and still pending before you has been made available to you on PCBiz in the plenary folder under 00-FI. As mentioned yesterday, the funding of some or all of these financial implications will require either additional sources of funding or reductions of staff, grants, and other adjustments to existing programs or a combination of both. And Mission Coordination Committee will also be meeting tonight after the final plenary to approve a final budget to bring to you in the morning. Mr. Moderator, this concludes the third report of the Mission Coordination Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Glass. At this point, the moderator recognizes the city clerk to explain the process for considering nominations for General Assembly positions. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. First, I'd like to uh, answer the question that was answered, asked earlier in, in PC Biz and item 0312, attachment B1, you'll see the membership figures that are used going forward to determine the per capita rate. So it's 0312, attachment B1. Thank you. Uh, before we act on the report of the nominating committee, it might be helpful to review the ground rules. First, the standing rules require that the names of any persons to be nominated from the floor along with pertinent information be provided to the nominating committee no later than 48 hours after the convening of the General Assembly. Floor nominations for additional nominations made during this General Assembly are due no later than 24 hours before the nominations are considered. This means no new nominations are appropriate at this time. Second, in nominating a person from the floor, the commissioner making the nomination must identify the person on the slate presented by the nominating committee who is being opposed. When the nominating committee presents its report, we will vote on all the nominations for offices not involved in challenges. Then opportunity will be allowed for one statement in support of each nominee, first for the nominee from the floor, then for the nom nominating committee's nominee. It is not appropriate to speak against the other nominee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. At this time, the moderator recognizes Catherine Purvis, moderator of the General Assembly Nominating Committee. Mr. Moderator, the nominations from the General Assembly Nominating Committee are found on PCBiz. These have been posted on PCBiz since well before the Assembly began and were referred to you in my first report on Saturday. They are items 00-02 followed by a letter. Mr. Moderator, there is a challenge to the following nomination. 00-02A, Daryl Fisher Ogden. You are about to vote to elect all nominees listed in item 00-02, except 00-02, a3. Is that clear? Advisory delegates, please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. 
Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their votes? Just raise a blue card. We await results. Theological student advisory delegates, 70% yes, 5% no, 25% abstain. Young adult advisory delegates, 87% yes, 3% no, 10% abstain. Ecumenical advisory delegates, 43% yes, 0% no, 57% abstain. Missionary advisory delegates, 71% yes, 0% no, 29% abstain. Commissioners, you've been advised. The question is, will the assembly elect all nominees listed in item 00-02, except for the challenged nominee 00-02A3? Please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their votes? We await results. On this vote, the yeas are 95%, the nays are 3%, the abstentions are 3%, the motion is agreed to, and the item is approved. There has been one challenge. Ms. Purvis, please place the name of your nominee in nomination. I place Daryl Fisher Ogden in nomination for election to the Advisory Committee on the Constitution. The moderator recognizes Commissioner David Brown to make a floor nomination. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm David Brown, teaching elder commissioner from the Presbytery of San Francisco, and I am glad to place a nomination to serve on the Advisory Committee on the Constitution my friend and colleague, teaching elder, Catherine J. Runyon. Mr. Brown, you may now speak to your nomination. Thank you. Kathy Runyon is my stated clerk. She's been the stated clerk of the Presbytery of San Francisco for 10 years now. Kathy is also a whitewater river guide, really. She takes people down the great rivers of the western United States in rafts. As our stated clerk, Kathy is an excellent guide in helping us navigate the river of Presbytery life. She knows the river well, able to point out the hidden rocks of parliamentary procedure and the beautiful canyon walls of our Constitution. And when those inevitable Class IV rapids of controversy loom, Kathy is well adept at positioning the boat so that we enter the rapid well prepared. And in the midst of those swirling waters as they crash in around us, Kathy is able to keep us all safely in the boat. And echoing the words of our GA stated clerk, we do not die. And we have fun doing it. Okay, that might be stretching things a bit. Although some of her friends are somewhat concerned about her huge collection of free stuff that she has gathered from the exhibit halls of 21 general assemblies, it shows Kathy's love for all things Presbyterian. She is an incredible student of our Constitution, firm on the theological foundations of our polity. She has worked at all levels of GA, even now, she is behind the curtain helping escort speakers to the podium. She is the Western Regional Representative of the Executive Committee of the Association of Stated Clerks. 
and she has taught Presbyterian history and polity for 20 years and has helped numerous GA commissioners learn how, it, how to do their job at GA. Kathy is a collaborator par excellence. She brings respect for and awareness of the differing theological views of the church. And in a congenial, gracious way, she is a team player with compassion and empathy for all involved. A clear communicator, an excellent researcher, superb attention to detail and administration, all qualities possessed by this nominee. And did I mention that she is a great collaborator? Therefore, I commend to you Reverend Catherine J. Runyon to be elected to the Advisory Committee on the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Ms. Purvis, please speak to the nominating committee's nominee, Daryl Fisher Ogden. Mr. Moderator, on behalf of the GA Nominating Committee, I enthusiastically nominate Reverend Dr. Daryl Fisher Ogden to serve on the Advisory Committee on the Constitution. Daryl is eminently qualified to serve on this committee. She has a Doctor of Jurisprudence degree, a PhD in Church History, and a Master's degree in Library and Information Science. She is an ordained Presbyterian minister and has been a licensed attorney for over 35 years. She teaches law and is dean of Abraham Lincoln University, an online university. Daryl has written many articles on church polity and its history and taught Presbyterian polity at Fuller Seminary while serving as dean of chapel and director of the Office of Presbyterian Ministries. These on-paper qualifications are matched by a real passion for polity, an in-depth knowledge of our Constitution, and a love for the Church. Daryl is a wonderful teacher, and at many General Assemblies, she has volunteered her time and expertise to help commissioners like yourselves understand and navigate our polity in order to achieve their goals, even if they were not her goals. In this respect, she is a quintessential fair-minded lawyer who believes in justice and due process, trusting that right polity will achieve justice and that polity exists to help the church. Darrell believes that the adoption of our new form of government marked a new day for the Church, and she is eager to help us learn from our history as we seek new ways in which polity can support our mission in the future. Darrell's additional service to the Church includes serving as a Presbytery Stated Clerk and as a member of both a Presbytery and a Synod PJC. She's helped her Presbytery craft overtures, been an overture advocate, and she is often called in as an expert witness in church polity cases. For eight years, she was a member of the Presbytery's Cooperative Committee, which prepares and administers our ordination exams. Perhaps most noteworthy among her many contributions to the church is the fact that while still in seminary, she convinced her presbytery to locate a new Presbyterian church in Moore Park, California. She helped secure a site, recruit families, and worked to organize the new church development. Twenty-five years later, Daryl is still active in the life of that congregation. Daryl will bring her careful legal mind her pastoral heart, and her strong evangelical faith to her service on the Advisory Committee on the Constitution, and she is clearly an expert in her field. I strongly urge you to elect Daryl Fisher Ogden. Thank you, Ms. Purvis. 
We'll now go directly to the vote. Press one for Daryl Fisher Ogden, the nominee from the General Assembly Nominating Committee. Press two for Catherine J. Runyon, nominated by a commissioner. Advisory delegates, please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their vote? We await results. Theological Student Advisory Delegates, 57%, Daryl Fisher Ogden, 43%, Catherine Runyon. Young Adult Advisory Delegates, 61%, Daryl Fisher Ogden, 39%, Catherine Runyon. Ecumenical Advisory Delegates, 83%, Daryl Fisher Ogden, 17%, Catherine Runyon. Missionary Advisory Delegates, 33%, Daryl Fisher Ogden, 67%, Catherine Runyon. Commissioners, you've been advised. Press one for Daryl Fisher Ogden. Press two for Catherine J. Runyon. Please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their vote? We await results. On this vote, 64% for Daryl Fisher Ogden, 36% for Catherine J. Runyon. Daryl Fisher Ogden is elected. Okay. Okay. Mr. Moderator, this ends my report. Thank you, Ms. Purvis. The moderator of the 219th General Assembly nominates persons to fill vacancies on the General Assembly Nominating Committee occurring at the close of this General Assembly. These nominations are posted in 00-04. No nominations have been challenged. The moderator recognizes the Vice Moderator of the 219th General Assembly, Landon Whitsitt, who will place in nomination the slate of nominees for the General Assembly Nominating Committee on behalf of Cynthia Bulbach, Moderator of the 219th General Assembly. Mr. Moderate. Thank you, moderator. I move the slate as posted in 00-04. Friends, you are about to vote to elect all nominees listed in item 00-03. Advisory delegates, please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change their vote? We await the results. Theological Student Advisory Delegates, 86% yes, 5% no. 10 abstentions, 10% 10 abstentions. Young Adult Advisory Delegates, 93% yes, 0% no, 7% abstentions, abstain. Ecumenical Advisory Delegates, 43% yes, 0% no, 57% abstain. Missionary Advisory Delegates, 86% yes, 0% no, 
14% abstain. Commissioners, you've been advised. Again, the question is, will the Assembly elect all nominees listed in item 00-03? Please vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Has anyone not yet voted or wishing to change your vote? Then we await results. this vote, the yeas are 97 percent, the nays are 1 percent, abstentions are 2 percent. The motion is agreed to and the slate is elected. Thank you, moderator. This ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Whitson. I turn over the chair to the vice moderator, Tom Trinidad. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Recognize a motion at microphone number seven. Mr. Moderator, I'm Emily Anderson, teaching elder from East Tennessee Presbytery. Uh, with great fear and trepidation, I move to reconsider the Assembly's vote on 15-11. Specifically, shall the substitute motion become the main motion? And if there's a second, I'd like to speak to it. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Please speak to the motion. I am well aware of how far behind we are, and my rear end is going to be in that seat for as long as all of yours are. But we all came to this assembly knowing that there were a few big items that we needed to talk about. I say that not to denigrate the work of any committee, including my own, but we passed this very important issue by a one or two vote margin. And if one other commissioner, as I think I did, inadvertently pushed the wrong button on their keypad, we'd be having a very different discussion this morning. I'm not here because I'm on the losing side. I'm here because I do not believe that we have the mind of Christ on this issue. And so I implore you, as far behind as we are, to allow ourselves some time to discuss this issue. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm going to ask the stated clerk to remind the assembly of the process of reconsidering action already taken. Mr. Clerk. Well, Mr. Moderator, uh, is, this is within the grasp of the Assembly to do. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple majority vote. I do need to be clear on uh, the, the Commissioner's comments. Did you vote in favor of the action that uh, was taken? Yes, sir, Mr. State Clerk. Thank you, ma'am. So we will now move to reconsider. Uh, those who wish to reconsider the, um, shall, the substance, shall the minority report become the main motion. Uh, would vote yes, and that would bring us back to the reconsider the, that vote. Uh, then once we vote to reconsider, then that would be back before us. All right, we have a question at microphone number five, please. Mr. Moderator, Tim Devine from Susquehanna Valley. I understand about voting for it. But what she just said was she inadvertently pushed the wrong button. Could there be clarification if someone votes meaning to vote for it to reconsider? Mr. Clerk. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I, be I believe what Roberts would say is that she did vote on the prevailing side. 
regardless of whatever in, her intentions may have been. And that's what Roberts gives as our guidelines as to who may ask and move for a vote to reconsider. Okay. Thank you. Before beginning debate on the motion to reconsider, I just want to remind everyone that uh, the, it was the wish of a commissioner yesterday to, on all items dealing with Committee 15 to do electronic voting. I plan to honor that. We also heard a suggestion this morning that questions be limited to 20 seconds. I remind the assembly of that suggestion and the will of the assembly to limit speeches to one minute. Will you join me in prayer for peace and justice? As our Lord has taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The motion before the assembly is to reconsider 1511, the action that we took on that item last night. I recognize speaking in opposition, number five. Thank you, Mr. Vice Moderator. David Berge, Teaching Elder Commissioner, Presbytery of Santa Barbara. Um, with all uh, respect to those who want to reconsider, um, I noticed yesterday at one moment Moderator Pressa was sort of um, hypnotized by the globe as it was spinning. And one thing I've noticed about the globe is it actually spins in the wrong direction. And I think that it's time for this assembly. We need, we need to not follow that, but, but spin in the other direction. And I know this is at people's hearts and convictions, and they want to do the right and just thing. But there was two votes, and they got further apart. And so I think we should um, uh, not vote for this motion to reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking in favor, microphone number eight, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jim Thomas, teaching elder commissioner from the Presbytery of Elizabeth. Uh, I rise to speak in favor of reconsideration. Uh, I realize that the substitute motion had, which we did pass, had some things to recommend it. Uh, specifically the, the amendment which made the substitute motion much like uh, 1510, which we have yet to, to pass on. 1510 and 1511, as they came out of committee, were designed to go together by the committee. They were meant that way, and that was what, what was hoped. Now, some people say that nobody cares. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna matter to people, but people around the world are watching, and when Jeremiah wore a yoke, when Hosea took a wife of harlotry. These were symbolic acts, but symbolic acts matter, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. There was a question over here, but the, apparently the question has been satisfied. All right. Speaking against the motion, Moderator recognizes microphone three. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Bill Budnick, ruling elder, John Calvin Presbytery. Uh, I do agree with the gentleman that just spoke. The world is watching. This body worked very hard last evening. We came to a conclusion. We voted. I ask you to vote against this motion. Allow our vote to stand, and let's move forward. We have a lot of work to do. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. To speak in favor, I recognize number six. Elizabeth Searles, Missionary Advisory Delegate to Committee 15. Last evening, many spoke, but few of those on the committee or few of our international advisors were able to speak. We serve 
covenantal partners in the land. Much of the motion that replaced is about us. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Speaking opposed, moderator recognizes microphone number seven. Uh, George Witten, ruling elder from the Presbytery of Utica. I voted for the motion yesterday to divest. I'm a little concerned, though, about reconsideration of motion after motion after motion, um, just on, on procedural issues. I am also concerned about people who on these very important issues abstain. I would implore commissioners to look at the evidence, search their hearts, and to vote and not to abstain. Thank you. To speak in favor of the motion, recognize microphone number three. Uh, Jim Shrigley, James Shrigley from uh, the Chicago Presbytery. Uh, I, spoke, I speak for reconsideration of, uh, of this vote. It is based on the fact that I believe many of the comments that were passed yesterday were based on us. It was based on relationships. It was not based on a New Testament statement on justice and against oppression and for compassion. I ask, would ask the commissioners here to carefully consider in your heart what justice is required. And the scriptures say it, do justice, love justice. That's what this is about. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking against the motion, moderator recognizes microphone number eight. Mr. Vice Moderator Barbara Campbell, Teaching Elder Commissioner from the Cascades. Considering the thoughtful, respectful, and I think diligent two-hour conversation that we had last night, considering the fact that we have equally important matters to discuss today, considering the fact that Fortunately or not, or unfortunately, the news has already picked up on our action from yesterday. And um, I'm quite pleased that they're, what, what I'm reading, what they're reporting is very balanced. That we are a denomination that's still seeking peace, still in solidarity with the Palestinians, but, by, but somewhat divided almost equally over divestment. Um, I would vote against this motion. I think we've done our good fellowship and stewardship already on this, on this issue. Thank you. Speaking in favor of the motion, moderator recognizes corresponding member at number nine, please. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rick Ufford Chase, moderator of the 216th General Assembly. I rise to urge the Assembly to reconsider last night's action. I know there is a great deal of work to be done, and most of that work, all of that work, is critically important to this assembly. We've been working on this concern for eight full years since my assembly. It's critically important that we get it right. There are so many voices that have not been heard. Christian Palestinian voices have not been heard. Muslim sisters and brothers have not been heard. I'd like to hear from representatives of World Mission about how this, this action will impact our partners around the world. Friends, let's take the time to consider this action with the utmost care. Thank you. Seeing several commissioners desiring to call the question at microphones, I recognize the one at number four. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Deborah Given, Teaching Elder, Palisades, Presbytery. I call the question. The question has been called and seconded. Will the advisory delegates please use your keypads to advise the commissioners on this motion? Please select your response when your keypad is active. And complete your voting now. 
Do any of you need more time? I see you. Do any advisory delegates need more time? Then we await results. On the matter of calling the question, our advice has been from the Theological Student Advisors, voting yes, 70%, voting no, 25%, abstaining, 5%. From our Young Adult Advisory Delegates, voting yes, 77%, voting no, 22%, with 1% abstaining. From our Ecumenical Advisory Delegates, voting yes, 22%, voting no, 67%, abstaining, 11%, and finally, from our missionary advisory delegates to sus suspend debate, voting yes, 71%, voting no, 14%, and abstaining, 14%. Commissioners, you have been advised. Please cast your vote using the keypad once it is active. The question before you is suspending debate. Please complete your voting now. Do any of you need more time? Then we shall await results. The will of the assembly is discerned by two thirds majority vote the yeas have it at 90%, with 10% voting no. The motion carries. We now proceed to voting on the main motion. The main motion is, of course, to reconsider the actions Assembly took last night on 1511. This will open up debate again on the motion, which was Which was, uh, shall the uh, minority report become the main motion? Advisory delegates, please use your keypad to advise commissioners. Vote when your keypad is active. Please complete your voting now. Do any of you need more time? Then we await results. Here is how our advisory delegates have advised us. Theological student advisors, 55% yes, 45% no, with none abstaining. You, uh, young adult advisory delegates, 43% yes, 56% no, 1% abstaining. On the question of shall the minority report become the main motion reconsideration? This, this is the motion to reconsider. Yes, this is the motion to reconsider, and the motion that we are reconsidering is shall the minority report become the main motion. To be clear, this is a vote to reconsider. Our ecumenical advisory delegates, 29% yes, voting no, 57%, abstaining, 14%. The missionary advisory delegates advising us, 63% yes, 25% no, with 13% abstaining. Commissioners, you have been advised. The motion before us is to reconsider action from last night. Please use your keypads to express your desire for the Assembly's next action. We are voting on the motion to reconsider. Yes, I, I, I see the screen. In the bold, is the motion that you are presently discerning. 
Yes, the motion is to reconsider, only to go back on what we decided last night. It is not the main motion. It is not the motion that was placed before the assembly last night. What we are discerning in this moment is whether to return to that decision and to make it again. Are we clear? Affirmation, good. So the, the motion before you is to reconsider. Please use your keypad to vote yes, no, or abstain. Please complete your voting now. Does anyone need more time? I see you. Does anyone need more time again? Please complete your voting. Does anyone need more time? Moderator, and I'm sure the whole assembly appreciates your careful consideration of this matter. Are you done voting? Then we await results. Simple majority prevails in this motion, and the simple majority is no. At 62%, 38% voted yes, with 0% abstaining. Motion does not carry. We will not reconsider 1511. A question from microphone three, please. My name is Joanne Ruther. I'm a, a ruling elder commissioner from the Presbytery of Baltimore. Since we are unable to speak through our votes, and because I suspect the D word has gotten in the way of speaking with our hearts, I would like to ask a question of everyone gathered here. Who will stand silently but truthfully from the heart like the women in black? Who will stand right now against the continued illegal occupation of the Palestinian lands? Who will stand with our Palestinian brothers and sisters who continue to suffer oppression and cruelty? Who will stand? Commissioner, thank you for your questions. I will remind the Assembly that our, our questions are designed to help the Assembly move forward in, in business or to clarify procedure. So please keep within that spirit as we recognize you for questions. At this time, the moderator recognizes Commissioner Jack Baca, moderator of the Committee on Middle East Peacemaking Issues. Thank you, Mr. Vice Moderator. Continuing the report of the, committal, the Committee on Middle East Peacemaking Issues, and based on the consultation of the leadership team last night, I would like to invite the Assembly's attention to items 15-03, 15-05, 15-07, 15-08, and 15-10. 15-03 is at the bottom of page one of our printed report, and then the rest continue on in the text. Again, items 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10. On behalf of the committee, I move that items 1503, 05, 07, 08, and 10 be answered by the action taken on item 1511, and I would like to speak briefly to that motion, sir. 
Please do, Mr. Moderator. The action that the Assembly took last night and reaffirmed just a few moments ago on item 1511 has slightly changed the original recommendation of Committee 15, particularly in regard to item 1510. Our original intent was to answer items 15, 3, 5, 7, and 8 with our action on 1511. But with consultation of the moderator of the assembly, the state of clerk of the assembly, and the leadership team of uh, Committee 15, uh, it is our understanding that 1510 also now substantively has been answered by our action on 1511, and that's our reason for including it in this motion, sir. You intend to include 1510 in this motion? Yes, sir. Uh, the slide was produced yesterday before the Assembly's vote, so uh, 1510 needs to be added to that list. Okay. So I'm a little confused. I'm sure some in the Assembly are too. Your motion is to answer 1503, 05, 07, 08, and 10 by action taken on item 1511. Yes, sir. I might explain a bit further. Um, these five now um, overtures to the assembly all dealt with the divestment question. And the committee took all of them together in consideration. The committee understood and proposed, was prepared to propose to the assembly that our action on 1511 uh, would answer the original four, and we were going to propose approval also of 1510 uh, with some slight amendments to that. Uh, but the substance of 1510 has already been dealt with in our action last night on 1511. Okay. And so it is, it is logical in terms of the committee process and the consideration of all of these motions on the question of divestment to answer them with our vote on 1511 last night. Okay, thank you. Moderator recognizes microphone number five. Shano Steinigel, Teaching Elder Commissioner from the Presbytery of Philadelphia. I, I consulted with the people here, and this is what I understood that I want to do, is to make a motion that instead of that, we consider each of those items separately. Mr. Moderator, that motion is in order. It is not debatable. It requires a majority vote. It does require a second. Is there a second? The motion is to take each of these items one by one. There is a second. All right. It is not debatable. So advisory delegates, will you please prepare to advise us with your keypad? Shall these items 03, 05, 07, 08, and 10 be considered by the assembly one after the other instead of all at once. That is the motion that has been seconded. Please use your keypads, advisory delegates. Please complete your voting now. Do any of you need any more time? Then we await results. Theological students' advisors say no, 36%. Yes, excuse me, yes, 36%. No, 64%. Young adult advisory delegates, yes, 12%. No, 88%, with none abstaining. The ecumenical advisory delegates, yes, 13%. No, 75%. Abstaining, 13%. And the missionary advisory delegates, yes, 50%. No, 38%, and abstaining, 13%. Commissioners, you have been advised on the motion from the floor to take these matters one at a time. Please cast your vote using the keypad. And complete your voting now. 
Do any of you need more time? Then we await results. Here are the results on the motion to take matters one at a time. The nays have it at 85%. Voting yes for 15% with none abstaining. The main motion on the floor is to have items number three, five, seven, eight, and 10 answered by actions taken by the assembly on 1511. Is there any discussion? Speaking against, I recognize number four, please. Mr. Moderator, Melinda Thompson, ruling elder commissioner from National Capital Presbytery. I'm sorry, I believe this assembly has been a victim of some parliamentary sleight of hand. And I speak against taking this action because there are presbyteries who have presented divestment overtures, and we have not been given the opportunity to vote on divestment because of the way 1510 was substituted for 1511. And that takes the whole process of bringing overtures to this assembly in a very bad place now, and it is not a good precedent for us to make. Thank you. Thank you. To speak in favor of the motion, I recognize Commissioner at number five, please. Thank you, moderator. I'm Sydney Roser, ruling elder from the Presbytery of Plains and Peaks. I think we had a very lengthy and careful and heartfelt discussion of these issues last night, and so I recommend that we vote in favor of this motion. I recognize the commissioner at number three with the motion, please. Uh, Jim Shrigley, uh, Chicago Presbytery. I, I would like to prefer since uh, I would like to make a motion, but I want to know if it's appropriate this time. Uh, I would like to move that specifically 1503 not be answered by the action of 511. I understand we've just heard an argument to that effect, but a motion was not made. Could I speak to the motion if the motion is appropriate? The, the motion would need to be seconded. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, the assembly has voted to not take these items up separately. So if you want to reach your goal, you would have to vote down what's being originally, what's being originally recommended as the answer to all of these, and then we would have to go back and, and work through them to see what would good answer be. We're not able to pull one. Is that correct, Mr. Moderator? Mr. Clerk, could you explain again? Please? Mr. Moderator, we're not able to pull one at this point because the assembly has voted to not do them seriatim. And you, and you cannot use your individual right as a commissioner to pull one once the body has declared that it will not take them seriatim. Thank you. All right, we've heard one commissioner speak opposed and one speak for. I see no others willing to speak for, desiring to speak for. Oh, there is one. So we will hear from the commissioner at seven speaking against, and then we will hear one speaking for. Commissioner number seven. Mr. Moderator, Emily Anderson, teaching elder from the East Tennessee Presbytery. I honestly don't know enough about these issues to know what I think in every case, but I do trust the work of our committees 
And in this case, in almost every one of these motions, the committee voted overwhelmingly to recommend them to the, pres to the assembly. And now, because of the substitute motion, we're about to vote them all down and overturn the work of the Middle East Peacemaking Committee. And so I would encourage us to vote no to answering these so that we can deal with them each individually and hear more from the committee about their thinking. Thank you. And speaking in favor of the motion, the Commissioner at number three, please. Tom Tucker, REC, South Louisiana. I commend the committee, Mr. Moderator, on avoiding the minefield that the stated clerk cautioned us about yesterday. Therefore, I rise in favor of answering these items as listed on the screen by 1511. Thank you. Thank you. Moderator recognizes Commissioner at number seven. Chris Campbell, Teaching Elder, Grace Presbytery, I call the question. Is there any objection to calling the question? Ending debate. There is. All right, so we will vote upon this is, as it is coming out of Committee 15. We will use our keypad, advisory delegates. The question before you is whether to call the question to cease debate and go to the main motion. Please advise us using your keypad. And finish your voting now. Do any of you need more time? Then we await results. On the matter of calling the question, our advisory delegates tell us student Theological student advisors, 95% yes, 5% no, with none abstaining. Young adult advisory delegates, 92% yes, 7% no, 1% abstaining. Our ecumenical advisory delegates, 63% yes, 38% no. And the missionary advisory delegates, 88% yes, 13% no. Commissioners, you have been advised. Please express your will using the keypads. and complete your voting now. Does anyone need more time? We await results. To suspend debate requires a two-thirds majority. The ayes have it at 91 percent. Voting no were 9 percent. The question has been called. The main motion is now to be considered by vote. The motion being to answer by action taken on item 1511, numbers 1503, 05, 07, 08, and 10. Advisory delegates, please offer us your advice using the keypads. Please complete your voting now. Is there anyone else who has yet to vote or to change their vote? Then we await results.
Are we awaiting results? Have I said that? No, here they come. Theological student advisors, 65% yes, 35% no with none abstaining. Young adult advisory delegates, 76% yes, 20% no, 3% abstaining. Our ecumenical advisory delegates, 63% yes, 13% no, 25% abstaining. Missionary advisory delegates, 38% yes, 38% no, 25% yes. 35% uh, abstaining. The moderator recognizes a question at microphone number one. Yes, Mr. Moderator, Judy Pickett with the Presbyterian Giddings Lovejoy ruling elder. I want to know if you can explain to us what happens to these five items if we vote no. I will refer to, defer to the stated clerk. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I only advise you rule, so. Um, if, the, if this motion fails, then, the, then these five items will have no recommended action as to how they are be to considered, and we'll have to consider them separately, and, and that be motions coming forward as to how we will respond to them. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, you have a motion before you. You have been advised. Please vote on this motion using your keypad. And complete your voting now. Do any of you need more time? Then we await results. The motion carries with a simple majority. The ayes have it at 76%, 24% voting no, with none abstaining. The answer by action taken on item 1511 will address 1503, 05, 07, 08, and 10. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Vice Moderator, I would invite the Assembly's attention to item 1502, which is on the middle of page one of our printed report. On behalf of the committee, I move approval with amendment of item 1502 on boycotting Ahava Dead Sea Laboratories and Ahada Klaim, an Israeli date growers cooperative, and I would like to speak briefly to the motion. Please do. The committee believes that the proposed amendment to recommendation one of this item more accurately describes the intent of the overture and also more fairly portrays the issue. The proposed amendment to recommendation two is an attempt not to single out two specific companies, but rather to include all products produced on Palestinian lands for the benefit of Israeli companies. The proposed amendment to recommendation four is an attempt to communicate our hope for significant progress and that the proposed boycott would be temporary in duration. The motion before you is on the screen. Is there any discussion? Recognize the commissioner at number three, please. I would like to propose a substitute motion that includes also, it includes the same wording, I believe, from number one, but then I would like to insert divesting from Caterpillar Inc. for its corporate practices in the occupied Palestinian territories, continuing with reaffirming the action of the 219th General Assembly to call for the temporary suspension, suspension of military aid to Israel until its occupation of Palestine ends. Commissioner sets forth a motion to substitute. Is there a second? Please speak up if there is a second. There is a second. All right. 
Do we have the text of that substitute? We do not. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's on its way. I've been advised to rule this motion out of order. The stated clerk will help us to understand how that is the case. We don't need it. Brothers and sisters, we are trying to discern together what God is calling us to be about. The issue of divestment from Caterpillar has already been addressed by the assembly and has been moved to be reconsidered, and that move to, to reconsider uh, failed, so we cannot bring that issue back at this assembly. So I would advise the moderator to rule this motion, this substitute motion out of order, since essentially it brings back the issue of divestment from Caterpillar to the center. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The moderator so rules. The motion before the assembly is to approve with amendment 1502. Are there discussion items? Speaking against the motion, I recognize the assembly member at number eight. Moderator Barbara Campbell, Teaching Elder Commissioner from the Cascades. An issue that I'm not sure we have considered at all in this debate is um, the fact that there are American Jews and Israeli Jews who are working diligently to bring peace between the Palestinians Palestinians and Israelis. They support the end of the occupied territories. They support the border of 1967. A vote, any vote that is, that goes against um, the, what is being done by Israeli, even though these Jewish friends of mine do not support it, any vote that goes against Israel is, um, tending to disrail the work of peace that's being done within the family by the Jewish folks who are for peace. Thank you, Commissioner. Moderator recognizes the Commissioner at microphone number four. Marilyn Daniel Ruley Elder from Transylvania Presbytery. I speak in favor of this motion and I commend the committee and the Presbytery of San Francisco because you have drafted a narrow and focused action which clearly states that we are opposed to the Israeli settlements on the West Bank. It is not a broad and general condemnation of Israel, but it is a focused message about that current policy. Thank you. Moderator recognizes the ruling elder commissioner speaking against at microphone number eight. I am Andrew Betts from Wabash Valley Presbytery. I'm a ruling elder. I would like to speak uh, that the, uh, the 1502 not be permitted at all, particularly Ahava products. They are wonderful. My dermatologist tells me it is a miraculous cure. It is not made in any Palestinian land. It is near the uh, Qumran caves at the bottom of the Dead Sea. But I wonder what is next after we do all of this boycotting. Uh, uh, diamond cutting is a major industry in Israel. Are we going to then ask you ladies all to pitch your diamonds in the Jordan River? Or how about the lovely honey in the Golan Heights? I think this boycotting is absolutely ridiculous, but be particularly the Ahava products which are distributed worldwide and is a curative balm because the balm available in Gilead, which is now in Jordan, is not available. Thank you. Thank you.
Speaking in favor, I call on Ruling Elder Commissioner at the microphone number five. Uh, Harold Pugh from the Presbytery of Philadelphia, a ruling elder. I was on the committee and got to witness uh, a number of people speaking on these issues, and my understanding uh, is that the people in Israel boycott products that are uh, made from th uh, things that are grown in the West Bank settlements. And so I speak in favor of this motion uh, with the understanding that folks are fairly united about the non-use of products that were grown on land taken from the Palestinians. Thank you. Call on the gentleman at microphone three. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Sean Huggerman from Lake Huron Presbytery. I call the motion. Calling the question at microphone number three. Is there a second? Okay. Advisory delegates, this is to suspend debate on this motion. Please advise us using your keypads. and complete your voting now. Does anyone need more time? Then we await results. Advising us are the theological students, 85% yes, 5% no, 10% abstained. The young adult advisory delegates, 95% yes, 4% no, 1% abstaining. Ecumenical advisory delegates advising us, 67% yes, 33% no. And missionary advisory delegates, 86% to suspend debate, 14% no, none abstaining. Commissioners, you have been advised on suspending the debate. Please vote using your keypads. And complete your voting now, please. Does anyone need more time? Then we await results. Among commissioners voting yes, 92%, and opposed, 8%. The motion carries by two-thirds percent majority rule. The motion has uh, been sustained, and debate is suspended. I call on the commissioner at microphone four for a question. Jeff Crabiel, teaching elder from National Capital Presbytery. Mr. Moderator, I understand there's a resource person with the Assembly Committee on Racial and Ethnic Concerns that might speak to this. I don't know if it's still in order to ask that person to, uh, to speak. Is there specific information you hope to acquire? Well, when you're reading the committee background reports, I, I, it seemed there was someone from that committee who had been speaking about it with particular experience related to Palestinian concerns that might help inform the assembly. Thank you. Is this individual on the stage with us? Yes, please come forward. Nushin Framke is here to represent the Advisory Committee on Racial Ethnic Concerns. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Nushin Framke from the Advocacy Committee for Racial Ethnic Concerns. Our committee is a permanent committee of the GA. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the position of the committee is um, that this uh, the overture should be approved for several reasons, one of it which is that our brothers and sisters of the United Methodist Church approved a blanket boycott of all settlement goods just this past April. Um, also, there was an important article for, um, in the New York Times in March 
from Peter Beinert in the Jewish community who considers himself a liberal Zionist. And his article was entitled, To Save Israel, Boycott the Settlements. And he calls the settlements non-democratic Israel. Um, and also to stand with the Palestinian uh, Christians who are asking us to do this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let me remind delegates who wish to ask questions that at this point, since we have the motion before us with the question called, we are open to procedural questions, not questions that might lead to more deliberations and advocacy. Is your question a procedural question about this vote number three? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but it is a question perhaps for the uh, person who just spoke. Uh, is it a, a question about procedure? Is it? No. No, it is not. Okay, I do not recognize okay. your microphone. Is your question about procedure, sir? Yes, sir. Wasn't the question called? The question is called, yes. Should we vote? Yes. <laughs> Advisory delegates, on the matter of approving with amendment number 1502, please give us your advice using your keypad. And conclude voting now. And do you need more time? Then we await your results. On whether to approve, from the Theological Student Advisors, 82% yes, 14% voting no, 5% abstaining. From our young adults, 80% yes, 18% no, 2% abstaining. From our ecumenical advisory delegates, 83% yes, none voting no, 17% abstaining. 100% of missionary advisory delegates advising a yes vote. Commissioners, you have been advised. Please use your keypad to express your will on this issue. And complete your voting now. Does anyone need more time? I see you. Does anyone need more time? Then we await results. Okay. That's a good idea. The results are voting yes, 71%, voting no, 28%, with 0% abstaining. The motion carries. At this time, I invite you to uh, stand, sing, and dance as we invite our musicians to come out and give us a break.